writers can't really exist without readers. That writers and readers are writers and readers because we engage in this reciprocal act of co-creation. So without a reader, a writer can't be a writer. Without a writer, a reader can't be a reader. Right? And so as a result, the, the, um, you know, it's like my part, of the, my part of the bargain as a writer is to write something like this, to write, to write a book. Right? And then I sort of put it out into the world, and it's received by, you know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> many different readers. Right? And so even though we think of a book as being kind of one solid object, actually there are, you know, hopefully, you know, hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands of a tale, you know, tales for the time being out there, each one different, because the book that you and I co-create is going to be different than the book that you and I create, right? And so it's, it's this, this, you know, it, it's this kind of really almost a magical, um, uh, what? Magical is not even quite the right word, but it's, it's this miraculous, um, kind of thing where one object suddenly, you know, gets cast out into the world and suddenly bursts into this array, right? So where, where there's one story, you know, one moment, suddenly in the next moment there are literally hundreds of thousands of, of tales out there, right? And this to me is really one of the magical things about, about the writing and reading, you know, about this collaboration. And in a way, this book is very much about exactly that, that piece of magic. Um, uh, now, the, the young girl, um, the, the, first, the first words um, uh, from the book um, came to me, I think, in, in uh, 2006. And I heard the voice of Now Hope, the young girl, and she announced herself to me. She said, she said, hi, my name is Now, and I'm a time being. Do you know what a time being is? Well, if you give me a moment, I'll tell you. And, and these were the first words that I heard. I wrote them down. And and I realized when I heard that, you know, there were, there were several things that I knew about her. I knew that she was a teenage girl. I knew that she was Japanese. Um, I knew that she uh, lived in Japan, but for some reason she was writing, and she was writing in English. So that was kind of mysterious to me. I, I wasn't quite sure why. Um, I knew that she, uh, she knew. She knew that she was writing to somebody, okay? Um, and there was this very clear sense that she was writing to somebody. She was almost calling, you know, calling to a reader, but she wasn't sure who that reader was. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and I didn't, of course, know who that reader, reader was either. So it was my job at that point to just follow, follow this voice, follow the voice of now, and see where it led me. So once again, you know, there's this sense of collaboration between a writer and a reader, um, for example, me and you, um, but there's also a collaboration between, you know, now the writer in the book, okay, the writer in the story, and the reader, Ruth, who's, you know, the character, Ruth, in the story. I know this gets confusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other, but the other, the other interesting thing about it to me was the, the sense of, you know, um, the collaboration that exists between a character and a fiction writer. And this, to me, is also what the book is about. It's about what happens when you know, a character who's, and you can kind of imagine a character kind of swimming you know, out there in the ether, you know, swimming out there in some kind of, you know, kind of Pirandellian soup, right? Um, who who you know, is, is sort of looking down on Earth and spots a hapless novelist walking by on the beach, <laughs> right? <laughs> and suddenly sort of descends on her and pops into her mind. And, um, and colonizes it, basically, for a period of five or six years, right? Um, and so it's also about that relationship, right? And, and it, all of these relationships are relationships that are about, about generation, about creativity. And, and so I think that's one of the things that, that, you know, it gives it so much power to me. And I think that's where the magic is. So it, it, these, are, these were the kinds of things that I was thinking about, you know, as I was writing the book. And these were the kinds of lines of inquiry that I was, I was following. And then, of course, a lot of other stuff ends up sort of swirling around in there as well. Um, I'm trying to think. You know, that when I was um, when I was first starting this in 2006, I'd just gone through a period of, of fairly intense study of Zen Buddhism, and um, and I was reading uh, the essays by a 13th century Zen master named Dogen Zenji, and he had written a, a, an essay called in Japanese it's called Uji, which can be translated as either time being, or being time, or for the time being. 
So this was all stuff that I was thinking about. I was thinking about it, um, and I think that's you know that was certainly part of what um, inspired Now's voice, you know, to, to come out with those lines um, and introduce yourself as a you know, hi, my name is Now, and I'm a time being. Um, so you know, so that was uh, Dogen's Dogen's philosophy was um, I think very instrumental in this. But the other thing that was also I think a big part of writing this book was um, in 2006. You know, this was um, after six years, you know, in the bullying theme, right? This theme of bullying and power abuse. And this was, you know, this was six years into the Bush administration, right? And so I was very aware that we were kind of living, you know, we were living in a bully culture, you know, that there was a kind of a bully, a tone of bullying um, in, in, you know, in uh, United States politics. And as a U.S. citizen, I'm a dual citizen, a Canadian and U.S. citizen, I, there was, there was, um, I was very sensitive to that, especially living in Canada. Right, because in Canada, you know, I'm I'm always walking around kind of like, you know, apologetic, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm Amer I'm American, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, at least up until the last couple of elections. But <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so you know, so this was something else that I was very, and you know, I was thinking about. I was thinking about how it is that that politics and and the the leadership of a country can set a tone that then, you know, people in the country just sort of react to and I think take on, too, for collective, you know, um, for uh, protective coloring or whatever. So, um, so all of these things were sort of swirling around in my head as, you know, I was following the, the storyline of, of this girl and trying to understand more about her. And, um, and, and I think the, the result of that was, was this book, which certainly does have a lot of elements in it. Mm -hmm. But I think that it also is very much about, you know, if there's one theme, it's this theme of interconnectedness. It's the ways that we are, um, we are all connected with each other, but in, in all of our relationships, in all of our myriad relationships. Um, and, you know, that, that sense of interconnectedness being both uh, geographic, you know, geographical or geos, you know, geospatial. Um, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, is a theme here is the um, oceanic, you know, the great oceanic gyres in the Pacific, right? Because Ruth, of course, immediate when she finds the book on the beach, she assumes that it's the leading he edge of the debris coming over from the 2011 tsunami in Japan, right? That that's her um, that's her idea, and um, so the ways that we're connected to each other through you know through these great natural forces like the oceanic gyres but also the way that we're connected to each other through the informational gyre of like the internet. Um, and also the way that we're, in, we're connected to each other through time and the way that time sort of cycles, right? This, the time sort of repeats, it's, you know, it, it, um, it cycles through um, so that we're connected to the past in, um, in very intimate ways that we might not always be aware of. Because that's so, also a part of it, but we yeah. need one. Yes, yes, she yes. That's right. I haven't talked about it. Haruki. There's two. Um, there are two uh, characters in this book um, who are um, uh, who, two male characters in this book who are who are important. Um, one is um, Nao's. Let's see now. Uh, Nao's great really uncle. Old. Yeah. No. <laughs> now, <laughs> we don't want to complicate. You. I know. I know. I don't want to complicate. <laughs> Nao's great uncle. So in other words, old Jiko's old Jiko's son. 